right, here we go. Let's start with a bike that's level, upright, and warm. Then we can look at removing the skid plate. Now it's pretty easy to do. You just gotta remove these bolts right here. One, two, three, four. Okay, now here's the crankcase drain bolt. Just twist that out and drain away. All right, now take a close look at this drain plug. That's a magnet. If it's got bits of steel stuck to it, yeah, forget the oil change, you got bigger fish to fry. This is a crush washer. They can be a little tough to remove because they get all mashed into the threads when you torque them down. But they're definitely worth replacing. Now you can see here a new one which is much thicker and has a tapered profile. Now you want to be sure to install it properly with the flat side towards the engine case. It's a good idea to jam that bolt in with a torque wrench. It's also a really good idea to use safety wire on all your drain bolts. Trust me on this, I learned that the hard way. These bikes also store oil in the frame. Now to drain it, you just pop out this bolt right here. Now here's the screen filter we want to get at, and to do it, we got to remove this link pipe. Okay, so here's where you can remove this banjo bolt out of the hose fitting. It looks a lot like a brake line fitting complete with washers. There's one on each side, and you can see them there on the table. But you can also see right here where I didn't notice that one got stuck on the back side of that fitting, and when it slipped off, I had to go fishing in the oil drain pan there. So pay attention. There are two of them. Now you can just loosen off this gear clamp and wiggle the rubber hose line off the end of that strainer nipple. And there you go. All right, now go grab a 24 millimeter socket and spin out that strainer. Now this one looks pretty clean. Either way, just wipe it down, maybe hit it with some brake cleaner, dry it off and you should be good to go. Just go ahead and torque it back in place. Looks like 16.5 foot-pounds is the recommended hit. Take a real close look at that link pipe before you reinstall it. If all is well, you can jam it back onto that screen filter nipple, but don't clamp it down yet. First install the banjo bolt and washers on the other end of the link pipe. Wrestle it in place and then torque it down. It looks like 16.5 foot-pounds is the recommended setting. Then you can go back up and tighten the gear clamp at the nipple. Here you can see the frame drain plug is pretty much the same setup as the crankcase drain plug. You just replace the crush washer and torque it in place. And this one is 13 foot pounds. Here's a great view of how much the crush washer actually compresses. I guess that's how it makes such a great seal. Here's a nifty little feature. This drain plug here lets you drain the filter housing so you're not slopping oil all over the engine case when you pull off the filter cover. It looks like the other two drain plugs, but on my bike this one just has a flat washer. You can remove the filter cover nuts with a 10 mil socket. And when you pull the cover, take note, it's under a little bit of spring tension. It'll have an o-ring in the cover too, keep an eye out for that. Now when you pull out the filter, you'll see a small o-ring on the back side of the housing. You can pull that out with a hook of some sort and replace it with the new one using the same procedure. Then pop in the new filter with the hole facing inward, just like that. And once you clean up the cover, it's not a bad idea to smash a little grease into that groove because it's a great way to hold a new gasket in place so it doesn't flop out when you go to put it back on the bike. Okay, notice the cover is directional and it has an arrow indicating up. Now be sure the spring is in place and we'll press on the back side of that filter properly too. Okay, then you can spin on those nuts and tighten them down. Well, I couldn't find any torque sitting in the manual, so just make them reasonably tight. Now, the same goes for that drain plug, reasonably tight, not ham-fisted, you gotta be smart here. Okay, now we're ready for some oil. All we gotta do is pull the filler cap, find your favorite funnel, get your favorite oil, and measure it up. It's actually 1.8 liters for an oil and filter chain, and it's only 1.7 liters if you're just changing the oil with no new filter. The rest is simple, reinstall the filler cap, Start the engine and run it at idle for five minutes or so to warm it up. Then you can turn it off, wait a few minutes to check the oil level. If it needs oil, top it up. If not, leave it alone and go for a ride. 
And when you get back, check for leaks. If all is good, reinstall the skid plate. You're all done. All right, that's an oil and a filter change on a DRZ400 Supermoto. Hopefully that helped. Now you can go do it to your bike. All right, I got stuff to do. See ya.